Oh yes, the NVIDIA Laptop GPU Conundrum. Look at this, folks. This is what's so difficult about reviewing laptops as a tech channel, and a tech channel that typically reviews laptops. The desktop side from 1660 Ti all the way to 2080 Super, it almost makes sense. You've got your pricing, and then the additional price per GPU. You've got the wattage that scales nicely, and you've got the Firestrike GPU performance that scales nicely as well. Now, these are stock, bone stock. There's no add-in board partner performance that you would get with higher wattage and overclocking. So just consider this a base, perhaps worst case scenario. But over here, man, this world almost makes sense. I still think there's too many graphics cards, but I also still think it kind of makes sense. But then you go over to the laptop side, right? And you've got all of these different wattages per GPU and a lot of convoluted fire strike scores for performance that really make things very confusing. With the main problem being these graphics cards and their chips are the exact same thing that's inside of laptops with the difference being the video BIOS that is flashed to the laptops to limit the wattage, right? It's gonna limit that wattage so it doesn't overheat and melt your laptop. I do not recommend trying to flash one of these BIOS on to your laptop. Don't do that because a good chance you're going to brick something, melt something. I don't recommend doing that. But that's the only difference is the video BIOS that limits the wattage. And now we've got a 1660 Ti with 80 watts, 90 watts, and 115 watts that can only be found in the MAG15 at this point. And 115 watt MAG15 1660 Ti compared to 120 watt 1660 Ti in a desktop, I mean, we're, we're very close here right? And I understand you can overclock the two and they can go back and forth, but nonetheless, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? And it's so close. One of my favorite GPUs for that reason alone is because I feel like it is pretty much what you get out of a desktop. And I'm pretty much okay with that, right? Well, what about the 2060? Well, thanks to the G14, we've got a 65 watt max Q, 80 watts, 90 watts, and 115 watt with electro boost and eventually we should be seeing more 115 watt SKUs with other laptops, maybe six to nine months down the road from this point. Pretty awesome, but now you're still getting low end scores between a 1660 Ti and a 2060 to be pretty close to the same here. So now we're paying for ray tracing, maybe use some of that deep learning super sampling 2.0, right? Kind of cool, maybe justifiable. When you compare it to a 160 watt 2060 though, there's still a pretty decent amount there, especially the lowest spec 2060 versus just the base 2060 inside of a desktop. 15,000 to 20,500 is a massive difference. And then if you factor in the best case scenario versus the base model 2060 in a desktop, it starts to get a little closer, but still 2,500 points difference in Firestrike is a whole nother graphics tier when you scale it down over here. So there's still a big difference there. As a matter of fact, when you start to work your way down all the way to the most expensive laptop GPUs, even their weakest ends all the way to their best model can barely beat a base model 2060 in a desktop. I mean, do we need to go on at this point? We will, but that right there should tell you something. And it's not, not the laptop's fault, they just can't handle this wattage. Be upset with NVIDIA for pulling 250 watts out of your 2080 Super. It needs that much wattage to stretch its legs, and I'm happy we have that performance. And as a former desktop guy, I think that's pretty awesome. I really do. But I like laptops, clearly, right? That's what this channel's based on. And we cannot justify the performance from these chips inside of laptops. Can we not win? Look at these scores, look at this. From the 15,000 at the weakest to the best at 22.8 versus 16.5 to 28. That's what, 11,500 point difference? I mean, that is, that is a massive difference in the desktop side, the way it's supposed to be, you know? Laptops, mm-mm, mm-mm-mm, not at all. Look how much overlap there is there, right? The best 2060 inside of a laptop is like, middle of the road 2070 max p which is significantly more expensive two to three hundred dollars more over a 2060 maybe more right 
Same with the 2070 Super, right? It moves up a little bit, 16.5 to 18.4, 22 to 21.2, but it's still not much faster than the 2060 boosted inside of a laptop, and it certainly can just barely hang on its best day compared to a base model 2060 at 160 watts. And then again, a 2080 Max-Q, 19,000 points. Yeah, yeah, those are pretty expensive. What does a 2080 laptop even cost these days? On sale, $2,000, maybe. I mean, just for a 2070 Super right now, the starting price on a laptop is two grand. And you're gonna spend, you mean to tell me you wanna spend two grand on a laptop that's gonna perform as good as a 2060. I could build a desktop 2060 for a thousand bucks, right? We all can. I love these laptops, guys. I love these laptops. I love laptops in general. But from a consumer standpoint, it makes it really hard to spend, you know, $2,350 for a 2080 Super when I know it's really not a whole lot faster. I mean, look at this, the best case 2060, 18K, no overclocking, versus a worst case 2080 Super, 18.1. I mean, you can get these laptops. What's an Electro Boosted 2060 even run right now? Maybe you can get that for, is that around $1,500 maybe? And they're max, I think the max 15 and max 17. That's not bad. That's actually pretty awesome performance for the money. Or you can spend another $850, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. Double the price for nearly the same performance. Now it's not, it's not as cut and dry in this, right? There, there's so much overlapping here, but do you see the issue, right? This, this is a big problem. In my eyes, it's a big problem. And a lot of these manufacturers too, they don't even post on their website that it is a max Q or a max P or the wattage. And you know what? Sometimes I can't even blame them for that because there's so much confusion on here it's not very well explained. So, I mean, we can be upset with the manufacturers all we want. If you want to be that guy, fine, that's fine, go ahead. But I think about this as like a business owner, and I don't want to be deceitful, but at the same time, like the majority of the people that are buying this stuff, they don't really know what this stuff means, right? It's a very niche community here on channels like this. And so, I mean, as long as they see that it has a 2080 in there, maybe it's a max Q, but it's not specified, Maybe it's just easier for them to do it that way. That way they, they don't put too much information on the website and it just confuses people. And I know that may be like a real head scratcher over your head here, but not a lot of people are as savvy, you know, as we are. And so just trying to play devil's advocate here. Should they disclose or be very transparent? I, I think so, yes. And I think there's a way to do that. But ultimately, bottom line is this makes sense this does not. And it's also why I like the 1660 Ti. I like that at almost all SKUs at 115 watts, it's spectacular. 2060 though, doesn't really make much sense until you get to 115 watts because now it's like a whole tier, right? You're going from like 15, maybe 16K up to 18K, right? That's two, 3000 point difference. That starts to make sense here, right? So we like this. We like this, we don't like this. What about this? I like this. I like both of these. I, I like a, a high performance 2070 Max P, but I don't like any of these. These two here at the lower wattage just overlap with everything else before it. These, these suck right here. These are awesome. This is awesome. This is good. But at this point, it's at this point where I would almost say, yeah, you know what? I don't really know if I can recommend a whole lot more because if you wanna go from a 2070 Super to a 2080 Super that's gonna cost you an extra $350 on average for an extra 1,600 points in Firestrike. If the laptop was 10 grand, I'd say go for it, you know, and the difference was $350. But 
the difference is $350 on a laptop that starts at two grand. So you're spending a whole lot to get very little. And I understand that that's also kind of been the norm, but let's be honest here. <clears throat> There's nothing normal about this at all, especially when you compare it to this. And this is not the first time I have blasted NVIDIA about this, okay? I've done this previously, several months ago. And I, I just I just don't like it, man. I just don't like it. I think there's a way to fix it. But now you have to pretty much eliminate most of these cards over here on the laptop side. And that's not going to work either. So let me know in the comments below. What do you think they should do? Be reasonable. Think about this here. Because we do have this much wattage to deal with. Should we just cap it at a 2060? Because some of these laptops could handle 160 watts. I'd be okay with that. Wouldn't that be nice? Right now we're spending $1,200 on a laptop with a unleashed, a proper 2060 for $1,200 that performs like a $2,350 machine. I kind of like that. Yeah, that's it. Peace out.